Welcome to part two of Absalom's rebellion against his father, King David of Israel. So, like I said, part two. So let's leave off where King David had retrieved his son from exile, from being banished. So turn to 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 24. And the king said, we're talking David, and the king said, let him turn to his own house and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and saw not the king's face. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he pulled his head, for it was at every year's end that he pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he pulled it. I guess that's cutting his hair, right? He weighted the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. And unto Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. So he named his daughter after his sister that was raped, right? Um, and under Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of a fair countenance. All right, so Absalom was a good-looking guy, the way I take it. Pretty handsome, you know. And... Uh, Let's face it, people, when uh, somebody marries a beautiful woman, there's a good chance the kids are going to be good looking too, right? Verse 28, so Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Joab to have sent him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Now, Joab was one of the servants of the king. Remember, he was the one that set this woman up to, um, you know, get the king to bring Absalom home. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he hath barley there. Go and set it on fire, and Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Oh yeah, I'm going to give you a wake-up call. Now I'm going to get your attention. I've called you twice, and you didn't, you don't come to me. So now I'm going to burn your field up, and then uh, you're going to pay attention, right? Then Joab arose and came to Absalom unto his house and said unto him, Wherefore have thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent unto thee, saying, Come hither, that I may send thee to the king to say, Wherefore am I come from Gishur? It had been good for me to have been there still. Now, therefore, let me see the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. What is iniquity? Sin. So he's saying, let me see my father, and if there's any wickedness in me, let him kill me. So a Joab came to the king and told him, and when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed, kissed Absalom. So they kissed and made up, right? That's a good thing, right? Well, let's go to 2 Samuel, verse 15. And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Ah, okay. So, chariots and horses. Now, that's all right. So, Absalom's got chariots and horses, and he's got 50 men that run in front of him. You know, and these guys are not probably quiet. They're probably saying, Behold, Absalom, the king of the sun, the son of the king, right? And Absalom, verse, uh, 2 Samuel 15, verse 2. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. Now you're talking about the entrance to the city, right? Jerusalem, the capital. Okay? 
it's got these walls and it's got a gate. So if you want to go into the city, you've got to go in through the gate. And that was to defend the city from invaders, right? So here it is, Absalom standing at the main entrance. Think about this. He's standing at the main entrance. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so, that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? He's saying, Oh, where are you from? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputy, deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom. He's like the first politician in the, in the mentioned in the Bible, you know. Oh, where are you from? Oh, what's going on? Oh, if only the king had somebody that could listen to you and, and your matter is good and it's right. You've got a good cause. And, and if I was in charge, I could help you. Right? Verse 4. And Absalom said, moreover, Oh, that I were made judge in the land that every man which hath any suit, you know, a suit, a lawsuit, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. Oh, yes, I'm a politician. I'm going to shake your hand and kiss your baby and tell you, oh, I, I wish I was in charge. I, could, I would help you out, people. The election's coming up, and, and I'm going to increase your welfare benefits, and, and I'm going to, you know, lower your taxes, and I'm going to make your, you know, help you out. Absalom, right? Verse 5. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. Yep, Absalom was kissing those babies, right? And the parents. Verse 6, And on this matter did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to pass after forty years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow, vowed a vow, while I abode at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. How can Absalom reign in Hebron when his father king is the David, the king in Jerusalem? Verse 11. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent for... Oh, I hate some of these Bible names. I don't hate them, but I hate to try to pronounce them. I should say that right. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo, when he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong. Ooh. For the people increased continually with Absalom. So not only was Absalom a good-looking guy, but he played the part of the politician, kissing those babies and shaking people's hands and telling them, you know, if, if I was king, I'd be taking care of you guys, not like my dad here, you know. I wouldn't neglect you like my dad's doing. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased, increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to saying, uh, I'm sorry, and there came, verse 13, 2 Samuel 15, verse 13. And there came a messenger to David, saying, 
the hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. Ooh. So, and David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest, the, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him, and the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. Now a concubine was sort of like a wife, not an official wife, but she did a lot of the things that a wife would do, if you catch my drift. So David had wives and concubines. Ten women that were concubines, not even counting as wives. So how many did David have? That's a good question. Um, and the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, and the Pilothites, Pilothites, and all the Gilatites, six hundred men which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then said the king to Ittai the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place, and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger, and also an exile. Whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us, seeing I go whither I may return thou, and take back thy brethren? Mercy and truth be with thee. And Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord liveth, and as my king, Lord the king liveth, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. And David said unto Ittai, Go and pass over, and Ittai the Gittite passed over, and all his men, and all the little ones that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over. The, the king also himself passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And lo, Zadok also, and all the Levites were with him, bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God, and they set down the Ark of God, and Abithar went up unto all the people had done passing out of the city. Now Zadok was one of the priests, and they had the Ark of God, right? Verse 25. And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the Ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he shall bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I, let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. The king said also unto Zadok the priest, see Zadok was a priest, art thou Art not thou a seer? A seer is a prophet, okay? Art not thou a seer? Return into the city of peace. That's what Jerusalem means. Uh, Jerusalem, Salem, Jerusalem. Of course, the Jews pronounce it Shalom, but it's Jerusalem. It means peace, city of peace. Return into the city of peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaaz thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abathar, Abathar, I don't know. See, I will tarry in the plains of the wilderness until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok therefore and Abathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And David went up by the ascent to of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered, and he went barefoot, and all the people that were with him covered every man his head, and they went up, weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, 
Ahai, the old Baal is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahai, the old Baal, into foolishness. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head, on whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, so here it is, David's taking one of his trusted servants and saying, go back to the city and go, go, to, go to my son Absalom. You know, he wants to kill me. Go to him and you can be a help to me. You know, but if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king. Ah, see, he's going to be a secret spy for David against his son Absalom, right? But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant. Hithero. Hitherto. So will I also be thy servant, that mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahai Theophel. I know I'm slaughtering that bad. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar, the priests? Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar, the priests. So Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, are going to be the spies, right? Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahai Maz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. So here it is. Absalom was reigning in Hebron, came to Jerusalem, where he intends to take over the throne from his father. And, you know, you can't have two kings, so one of them has to be gotten rid of. Well, this is how that works, right? Uh, let's see. All right, 2 Samuel 16, verse 1. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephilbosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine, that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thou art, thine are all that pertaineth to Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when king David came to Baharium, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimshai, Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. Now remember, Saul was uh, the king before David. And there was probably a lot of bad blood because, you know, let's face it, David took over the king from, from Saul's family. Uh, you know, Saul's family's probably, like, still mad about this, right? All right, so, um, so King David's going to Bahurium. Behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David 
and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou, mount of, and thou man of Belial. So he's calling David a, a man of Belial. He, he's calling him a, Belial was like a, a satanic god. So he's calling David a, a follower of Satan, basically. Verse 8. So here is Shimei's cursing him and calling him names. And, and he said, The Lord, the Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whom stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruai, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. So here it is, you know, one of David's soldiers like, let me kill this, let me kill this dog. Let me kill him. I'm, I'm going to chop his head off with my sword. And the king said, verse 10, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruai? Let him, so let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine afflictions, and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursings, for his cursing this day. Remember what the Lord had said? Well, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, and verse 11, remember when Nathan the prophet confronted David concerning what he did with Bathsheba? Nathan had said, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee. I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. So he made a prophecy. The Lord was going to raise up evil against David from his own household. And his own wives are going to be uh, have another man lie with them. Well, guess what? That's coming. All right. And uh, let's see. All right. 2 Samuel 16, verse 13. Let's continue what we were reading. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem and Ahithio fell with him. And it came to pass when Hushai the archite and David's friend was come unto Absalom that Hushai Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king. God save the king. Do you know that in England to this day, they say, God save the king. Right out of the Bible here. So here it is, Hushai, the friend of David, goes to Absalom, and he's saying, God save the king. You know, David spies, right? And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? And Hushai said to Absalom, Okay, so Absalom's kind of suspicious here, because Hushai is the friend of King David, right? And he's a little suspicious. So he says, 
Is this the kindness to your friend, the king, my father? Why didn't you go with uh, your friend, King David? And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and his people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. Good answer, right? So here it is, Hushai is appealing to Absalom's pride. Oh, but to whom the Lord and all the people and all the people of Israel who they choose, that's who I'm going to stay with. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in thy father's presence? So will I be in thy presence. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahai Theophel said unto Absalom, Check this out. Go in unto thy father's concubines. Ooh, go in unto your father's concubines. Remember? Another man was going to lie with his father's wives. Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred, or hated, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. So Nathan's, the prophet's prophecy came to pass. His son went in unto his wives and did them, if you know what I mean. All right, so, and the counsel of the high Theophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God, so was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. All right, go to chapter 17. All right, so. Now we're getting to the meat. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men. Do you know what 12,000 men is? That's a lot. And I will arise and pursue after David this night. For those of you that were in the army, 12,000 men is the division. Okay? Uh, 200 men's a company. Four companies is a battalion. And a whole bunch of battalions will make up a regiment, and like three regiments will make up a, uh, a division. I mean, that's like an entire army group, a division. I mean, that is a lot of men. I mean, David's only probably got six, seven, eight hundred thousand, uh, six or seven or eight hundred men. And they want to throw 12,000 against his whatever, six, seven hundred. Okay? I mean, it was an overwhelming force. So, here it is. This uh, wicked counselor is saying to Absalom, let me uh, choose 12,000 men and I will go and I'm going to go after David right now. Verse 2. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak, handed, and will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all returned, so all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. 
Now remember, Hushai is the friend of David. And when, uh, and when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahathophel hath spoken after this manner, Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. So, and Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahai Theophel hath given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, thou knowest that thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chafed in their minds as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field, and thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit or in some other place. And it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, There is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. For all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee from Dan even to Beersheba as the sand that is by the sea for multitude that thou goest to battle in thine own person. So here it is the wicked counselor wanted to take himself and 12,000 men and go after David right now but David's friend, the spy, says, no, 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 don't do that. David and his men are, are, they're warriors. And you don't want to make a big civil war out of this. So what you need to do is unify everybody and you go in person and go after David. This way it gives David time to get away you know, and, and to prepare himself. Because right now, David's on the run. All right? Uh, let's see. And he's saying, you got to lead the battle, Absalom. You want to be king, you have to lead the battle against your father. And this guy is David's friends. You know, his friend. Verse 12. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground. And of him, and of all the men that are with him, there shall not be so much, there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel, for the Lord hath appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Huh. So, the... Uh, the wicked counselor that was against David wanted to go right then and there and chase after David with an overwhelming force. But David's friend was giving counsel and the Lord turned Absalom's heart toward David's friend, the spy, to give David time to get away and to bring evil upon Absalom. So what do we read about that? Now remember, Absalom probably lost all respect for his father concerning the matter with Tamar, his sister, whom his son had raped, right? And he probably thinks, well, you know what? I'm going to make a better king. He gets lifted up in pride. Didn't that happen to Satan when he tried to overthrow God? Oh, yeah. So... So... For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahai Theophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. You know, the Lord didn't tell Absalom to go after his father, the king, right? All right, verse 15. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to 
Abiathar the priest, thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz staying stayed by En Rogel, for they might not be seen to come into the city, and a wench went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in Bahurium, which had a well in his court, whither they went down. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. So here it is. Uh, the priest's sons went and warned David. One of Absalom's followers saw them, told Absalom. So they went and hid at somebody's house. There's a well in the ground, right? So she spreads a cloth down over the well's mouth. They're down in the well. And then she spreads corn all over it, like she's, you know, going through the corn, you know, separating the, the good stuff from the bad stuff, which is something that was common back in those days, right? Um, verse 20. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And he, and the woman said unto them, They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus hath a high Theophel counseled against you. Then David arose and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan by the morning light there, lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. And when Ahai Theophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and died. So he hung himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. You know what people think about Judas Iscariot? You know, David was the root and offspring of David, and he betrayed Christ. Well, this guy betrayed David the king, and he knew, he knew that because his plan was not followed, that Absalom was going to fail. So what does he do? He hung himself. He betrayed the king, and he hung himself. What did Judas do? He be betrayed the king and he hung himself. Isn't that something? He put his household in order. He wrote his will. Okay? Verse 24. Then David came to Mananim, and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa, captain of the host, instead of Joab. Huh. Which Amasa was a man's son, whose name was Ithra, an Israelite, that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zeruai, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. And it came to pass when David was come to Menahem that Shobai, the son of Nahash of Rabbah, of the children of Amnon, and Machir, the son of Amiel of Lodabar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite of Rogimlim. Boy, some of these Old Testament names. You try it brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat. For they said, 
The people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. So David had his friends. Okay? So here it is. They brought provisions for David and his people. All right, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. Uh, and David numbered the people that were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. So David's evidently got at least 2,000 people with him, if not more. I don't know. It doesn't exactly say how many. But he's got a bunch. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab. Huh. So Joab, who was buddies with Absalom for a while there, is... Um, is now with David. And a third part under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zeruai, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Ithai, the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I surely, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth, for if we flee away, they will not care for us, neither if half of us die will they care for us. But now thou art worth 10,000 of us, Therefore now it is better that thou succor us out of the city. Succor, or succor, means to, uh, well, let me look it up. It, it, it means to give comfort, basically. So, you know, it's, they want David to stay behind and, and give them comfort. And the king said unto them, What seemeth you best? I will do. And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ithai, now well, these are his generals, right, saying, now listen to this, David gets his three generals, saying, deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the, when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. In other words, uh, when you go into battle, you know, yeah, kill everybody that follows Absalom, but don't kill the leader. Don't kill my son Absalom that's trying to kill us. Deal gently with him. Huh? Absalom, the son, is trying to kill all these people, and King David's saying, deal gently with him. Really? So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David. And there was a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. So I guess uh, more people died in the wilderness, you know, in the woods than died by the sword, you know, by fighting, right? And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak. And his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. So here it is, he's riding on a mule, he gets caught on a branch, his head's caught on the branch. I don't know if it was, you know, between the neck and the, sh you know, the shoulders and the head by his neck, you know, probably a branch caught him, you know, because that's what happens when you're in the middle of battle and your, your, your mule is moving. You know, you're not necessarily looking in front of you. And the mule is lower than Absalom. So the mule was able to go underneath this branch. But Absalom's high, so his, probably his neck probably got caught in this branch. And, um, you know, he's kind of choking. So he's, he's, he's hanging from this branch probably by the neck, right? Um, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, that's a branch, 
and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. So he's hanging by a branch, right? Probably by the neck. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him. And why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? So Joab's telling, you know, this guy saying, Oh, Absalom, the leader of this rebellion, he's hanging from a branch in the tree. And Joab's like, well, why didn't you kill him? Why didn't you kill him? Okay. And behold, thou sawest him, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not put forth mine hand against the king's son. Ooh, would you want to kill the king's son? Not me, buddy. Uh-uh. For in our hearing, the king charged thee and Ab Ab Abishai and Ithai, saying, Beware that none toucheth the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I should have wrought falsehood against mine own life. For there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself would have, have set thyself against me. So here it is, this guy saying, uh-uh, not me, buddy. I ain't going to kill the king's son. Uh-uh, no, you can give me a thousand, thousand silver coins. Uh-uh, I ain't doing that. You know, king would kill me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. So he's saying, you stay behind, right? And he took three darts in his hand. A dart, okay? That's like an arrow, but it's a hand. It's it's heavier than an arrow, and you throw it, okay? And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom, while he was yet alive, in the midst of the oak. Why three darts? Father, Son, Holy Ghost? I don't know. Uh, three, you know, you put three darts through somebody's body, yeah. You know, the first one would probably wound him if nothing else. Second one would kill him, and the third one's just for good measure, right? Just to make sure the job's done. And ten young men that bear Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. And Joab blew the trumpet and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Joab held back the people. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood and laid a very great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, every one to his tent. You know, that's what happens. You know, uh, when you kill the leader, I mean, the rebellion's gone, generally. When you kill the leader, the rebellion, the rebellion's over. Everybody goes back home, right? Now Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which in the king's dale, for he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance, and he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, Let me now run and bear the king's tidings, how that the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Then said Joab to Cushai, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushai bowed himself unto Joab and ran. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, yet again to Joab, but howsoever, let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushai. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tiding ready? But howsoever, said he, let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then 
Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain and overran Cushai. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate under the wall and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came a place and drew near. Now, you got to realize, these are back in the old days, right? They didn't have radios. They didn't have telegraphs. So when somebody was running, tidings means, you know, to, to, to deliver a message. Good tidings, bad tidings. Okay? And the watchman saw another man running. And the watchman called under the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also bring, he also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Bethinketh the running of foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaaz called and said unto the king, All is well. So here it is, he brings a message. All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord thy king. Oh, I'm sorry. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which hath delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my Lord, the King. So he's saying, everything's good, and God delivered, delivered up the rebellion, the rebellious army, and defeated them. Of those that lifted up their hand against the King. Okay? And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ooh. And Hamaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, Cushai came, and Cushai said, Tidings, my lord, the king. For the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. All. And the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom saved? Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, The enemies of my lord the king and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt be as that young man is. In other words, he's dead. The enemies of my lord, the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. He's dead. Okay? And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber, over the, to the gate, over the gate, wept. And as he went thus, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. See, King David would have rather died than have his son die. You know, in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 12, we read, Honor thy father and thy mother. Did Absalom honor his father? Absolutely not. By trying to kill him? That's not honoring your father. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, did he honor his father? No. Were his days prolonged? Did he have a long life? No. Absolutely not. In 1 Samuel... Chapter 15 and verse 23, we read the following. For rebellion, you know, when, when, when Israel had a king called David that the Lord had put up, and you're going against him, and you want to get rid of him and be king in his stead, that's rebellion. Okay? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity, and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. 
Ooh. I mean, this was said to King Saul, but it would just as easily apply to Absalom. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. What was the penalty for witchcraft? Death. What happened to Absalom? Death. And stubbornness is as iniquity, iniquity is sin, and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Absalom was rejected from being king. All right, well, let's keep reading because this is, we're getting close to the conclusion. Uh, you know, I, I never would have believed that this Bible study was going to take two hours, but it did. Okay, 2 Samuel 19, verse 1. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. So here it is. Joab had killed Absalom. Okay? Now, Joab knew that if, if Absalom was left alive, it was only a matter of time before he would do another rebellion. And the thing is, when you're the general of the king's armies, and you've got somebody that's trying to kill the king, well, you're dead too. I mean, you know, let's face it. Uh, you know, here it is, your job's to protect the king, and you're supposed to give your life to protect the king, and here it is, somebody else is trying to kill the person you're supposed to protect. I mean, you know, the next time there's a rebellion, he may not be so, would you say, lucky? And Absalom most certainly would have killed Joab. You know, so Joab was probably thinking uh, he's saving his own skin and, the, you know, his wife and the king's wife by killing Absalom. But here it is, David's all crying. Oh, Absalom, Absalom, oh, boo-hoo. You know, and Joab's like, dude, he would have killed both of us. You know, he would have killed all of us. Absalom would have killed us all. And you're crying over this? And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. Everybody's crying. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And the keep People get by them by stealth that day into the city, as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. In other words, everybody's kind of slinking in, you know, they're they're kind of hiding themselves, you know. Instead of being out openly proud and happy, they're kind of they're doing it by stealth. They're they're kind of hiding themselves, right? But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life, and the lives of thy sons, and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives, and the lives of thy concubines. So Joab's coming to the king and saying, you know what? You have made us ashamed. We fought for you. We risked our lives to protect you from this rebellion. And what do you do? We, the head of the rebellion dies. And what are you worried about? You're worried about your son. You, what about us? Let's face it, if Absalom would have won, he would have probably slaughtered every single one of King David's sons. Because after all, you don't want another heir to the throne. Okay, that's how, that's how things were. If there were ten different sons from five different wives, the one son, when he came to power, would have killed the other nine sons so that there would be nobody to challenge him. So instead of just Absalom dying, it would have been King David dead, all his army, all his friends, all his servants, and his children. But Joab knew this. And he's pointing this out to the king. 
And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which they with this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines, in that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants for this day. I perceive that if Absalom have lived and all we had died this day, then it would have pleased you, it would have pleased thee well. In other words, if Absalom would have lived and all of us would have died, you'd have been happy. What, you hate the people that defended your life, your friends, and, and you're sad because the son wanted to kill us all? And you're more sad because he died and, and, and we're alive? You'd have been happier if we would have all been killed. Your friends, those that risked our lives to protect you and save you, you'd have been happier if we would have been dead and your, and your rebellious son that tried to kill you lived. Uh, Joab's got a good point here. So he says, Now therefore arise, go forth and speak comfortably, comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night, and that they will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth unto now. In other words, get your stinking carcass out there and speak nice to everybody that fought and, and people that fought for you to save your life. Get out there and speak nice to them. And quit worrying about that rebellious son that tried to kill you. Get out. Go. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and there told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate, and all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies. He delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. Remember Goliath? David saved the people of Israel from Goliath. This is what they're talking about. And he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he has fled out of the land for Absalom. Now Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house, seeing the speech of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house? Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones, my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Am Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the people of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. So here it is, Judah and Jerusalem and are saying, You know, come back to us, king. So the king returned and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, which was of Bahurim, hastened and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons, and his twenty servants with them. And they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan. Ah, remember Shimei? He was the guy that was throwing the rocks, that was cursing David, casting dust, saying all these horrible things to him. Well, here it is. King David's coming back, and he changed his tune. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan. And said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. 
for thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come down the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. And Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there, shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king sware unto him. And Mephiosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed, until the day he came again in peace. And it came to pass, when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephiosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride there, thereon and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. And he said, Oh, and he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king, but my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. For all of my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the land. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all for as much as my lord the king is come again in peace unto his own house. And Barzillai the Gileadite came down from Rogliam and went unto, over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, Barzillai was a very aged man, even fourscore years, that's eighty, even fourscore years old, and he had provided the king of substance while he was lay at Menahem, and he was a very great man. And the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servants taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Therefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king. Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense it, me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in mine own city and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold, thy servant Shimham, let him go over with my lord the king and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. So, let's see. So, here it is. The Lord's going back. Uh, well, the Lord's anointed King David of Israel is going back to Jerusalem after the battle, after Absalom had tried to kill him. So, now you know, maybe, why Absalom tried to king David, tried to kill David the king. You know, David was uh, not a perfect person by any means, but the Lord loved him, and the Lord made a covenant with him that he would always have a uh, a son to rule over the over Israel and guess what Christ is a son of David So let's read a few things about the uh, throne 
Now, Solomon was David's son from Bathsheba. Now, Absalom wanted to be king, but the Lord had other ideas. In 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 45, And King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 5. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. And this is, you know, he's talking about uh, Solomon. In the book of Psalms, chapter 132, verse 11. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Jeremiah 33 and verse 17. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. You know, when you want something, you want something you don't have. Because if you have something, you don't, you know, you don't have to want for it. So basically what this verse is saying is David's never going to have to uh, be wanting to have a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. There was because the Lord's saying there's always going to be a man sitting upon the throne of the house of Israel. Now, Christ is of the house of David, and he's sitting upon the throne in heaven. But is there a, an earthly throne of somebody with David sitting upon the throne on the earth today? I don't know. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Thus saith the Lord, If ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, in other words, if you can stop the night from turning the day and the day turning from night, that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his his throne and with the Levites, my priests, my ministers. Verse 22. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. What about Christ? Luke chapter 1 and verse 32. Speaking of Christ. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Oh, yeah. So you got to figure Christ is the fulfillment of that. So, all right, well, I hope you learned something. And please remember something. We're pretty close to the election time. And no matter who wins, uh, just remember something. The Lord's in control. The Lord's on his throne. Personally, it doesn't matter because this is, right now, this is, uh, people want to follow Satan as their king. They don't want Christ as a king. So wickedness is going to get worse and worse and worse. And quite frankly, it wouldn't surprise me if the Jews redo, re, do rebuild their temple. If there is a man of sin, the Antichrist, the beast, the son of perdition, and the false prophet doing lying wonders and miracles, to deceive the people, even the very elect, Matthew 24, 
and other verses. I've done many other studies on that. And because uh, the people don't want Christ as king. So stay close to Jesus, people. It's Things are going to get rough. Things are going to get really, really, really rough soon. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen. This is the end of part two of Absalom's rebellion against King David, his father. And I pray that you'll uh, stay close to Jesus. Because, boy, things are going to be rough really soon. In Jesus' precious name, amen.